What we have now is a talk by a full-time Ruby committer that works at Cookpad. Um, in that capacity, he really likes it that he can work together with Yukihira Matsumoto on at least a monthly basis. So that's nice. And um, I've heard he's a well, very good programmer. And then we, no, no, it's a it's a really brilliant programmer. So um, I think that's nice that we have him on stage as well. And he's the winner of the. IOCCC, which is <coughs> the International Obfuscated C Code Contest. You could say he never gets seasick. <laughs> <laughs> yes! A fresh round of applause for Yusuke. Yeah. Thank you. Good uh, My name is Yusuke Endo. I come out to Japan. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is all uh, I know about that. Uh, so I'll talk about uh, plan towards uh, Ruby three types. Unfortunately, I will not talk about IOCCC. But uh, anyway. <laughs> Uh, I'm Yusuke Endo, and I came from Japan. Uh, I'm working at Cookpad as a full-time Ruby committer. Uh, so my job is to develop uh, called MRI, Mat Ruby Interpreter. Uh, Cookpad employs two uh, full-time Ruby committers, me and Koichi. Uh, Koichi, uh, you may know, uh, Ruby VM guy, and he makes Ruby faster. So uh, I'm now here, uh, thanks to Cookpad for sending me to Rotterdam. So let me briefly introduce uh, our company. Uh, we are providing some services uh, for our mission to make everyday cooking fun. Uh, the biggest service is Cookpad.com, uh, which is a recipe sharing platform service. Uh, uh, you can submit your original cooking recipe, and you can also find uh, recipes of, of uh, other users. Uh, there are 90 million uh, monthly average users in the world. Uh, currently, uh, Cookpad supports two, uh, sorry, uh, 29 languages and services at uh, 72 uh, countries. Uh, this service is still growing to aim to be number one uh, in 100 countries. Uh, Cookpad and Cookpad.com is written in Ruby on Rails. To develop and maintain this large-scale uh, service, uh, we need uh, many great Ruby engineers, so we are hiring. Uh, I'm working at Japan, but Cookpad he headquarters is uh, in Bristol, United Kingdom. So if you are interested, uh, feel free to contact on me. Okay, I did the job. And uh, <laughs> 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 in Cookpad, I, as I said, I'm developing Ruby. Uh, my main contributions uh, include uh, the implementation of keyword arguments in 2.0, uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, uh, test coverage measurement feature and de facto standard uh, benchmark uh, program for Ruby 3 by C called OptoCart. Uh, recently, I proposed, uh, implemented, and committed an uh, endless range in 2.6, and the beginless range is uh, planned to be shipped in the next release 2.7 in December of this year. And we are now uh, developing Ruby 3, uh, which is planned to be released in 2020. As Matt said uh, in his keynote, uh, Ruby 3 had three goals. First is performance, as long as three, uh, Ruby 3 by 3, uh, which means uh, Ruby 3 will be three times faster than Ruby 2.0. Second is concurrency. Uh, Ruby 3 will provide a better concurrency model than the uh, traditional thread model. And third is static analysis, and this is my main mission. And th Ruby 3 will provide a way to analyze Ruby programs statically. Uh, this goal was uh, the most uncertain uh, among these three goals. Uh, since uh, years, uh, years ago, uh, I have monthly discussed uh, this goal uh, with Matt and other contributors, and recently we could figure out the goal uh, as a concrete program. So in this talk, uh, I'd like to introduce the current month's uh, plan for Ruby, static Ruby 3 static analysis, uh, Ruby 3 types. And then I will uh, explain one of the components in this plan. 
uh, called type profiler, which I'm now developing. Okay, so first uh, I explain uh, Matsu's plan. Uh, the objective of the Ruby 3, ty uh, Ruby 3 types is to find a uh, possible type bug. Uh, it aims to provide helpful information for a programmer to write and debug a Ruby code. Uh, type analysis can be sometimes used for performance improvement, but in this case, it is not our scope. And uh, we have important requirement. We must keep the great ex uh, programming experience uh, of Ruby. So, for example, uh, uh, we must not impose uh, all Ruby users to write uh, type annotation like this uh, to make type, uh, type checker easy or feasible. Uh, of course, uh, if you want to write an annotation, uh, we don't stop, so <laughs> please write uh, yourself. Uh, but uh, we want to keep uh, Ruby un annotated by default. Uh, based on this uh, objective and requirement, uh, Ruby 3 will uh, provide three items for static analysis. First is uh, a standard uh, type signature format. Uh, second is a type le uh, sorry, level one type checker. Uh, and a kind of, uh, type inference. Uh, this requires no signatures and reports a possible bug and suggests a prototype of type signatures for no untreated Ruby code. And third is a level two type checker. Uh, this requires type signatures uh, and verifies that the code complies with the, its signature. I'll explain uh, these three uh, in turn. Uh, first is uh, type signature format. Uh, this is an example of, for array class, Britain array class. Uh, this code uh, looks similar to Ruby, but uh, in fact, it is not Ruby. Uh, this file complain, uh, complements uh, Ruby code and shows what types uh, each method accepts and returns. For example, array each, you know, uh, accepts a block and it returns itself. And this block accepts an element type of this array. And the result is, uh, in this case, void, which means it is just ignored. Uh, this uh, signature format supports some features for uh, representing Ruby code in type, uh, such as generics, mixing, optional type, uh, interface, uh, any type, blah, blah. And you can uh, find the current proposal for this format, uh, namely uh, Ruby signature. And the next is a type checker that does not require signatures. It attempts to find a possible error, uh, including no method error, type error, and a kind of argument errors. Uh, it works even if an um, application has no signatures, uh, though it may report false positive. Uh, this is an example. This soup is a typo, so the checker reports it may cause no method error. And in this case, uh, a variable s is a string. So uh, s plus 42 uh, is one as a possible type error. Currently, uh, there are two proposals for this item. Uh, one is type profile of which I'm developing. Uh, I'll explain this later. And uh, the other is MRuby's exper experimental ZIT compiler uh, called MRuby MetaCircular. Uh, which performs similar analysis to reduce uh, runtime type checking overhead. And uh, level one type checker is also supposed to have a kind of uh, type inference feature. This feature suggests a prototype of type signatures for no annotated Ruby code. Uh, for example, if the checker uh, reads this code, uh, it suggests uh, that the function who uh, should uh, receive string or integer and should return a string. And the type, uh, the, sorry, uh, the level one type checking and type inference can be both done by the same approach called abstract interpretation technique, uh, Matt said in his keynote. Uh, it virtually, uh, virtually lands uh, Ruby code in type level and prints what types uh, each method accepts and returns. Uh, uh, in uh, type signature format. Okay, and the third is a level two type checker. Uh, this is somewhat traditional, uh, traditional type checking. Uh, so it requires a signature uh, for each Ruby code and verifies that the 
code complies with its signature. Uh, it is based on uh, some established uh, techniques, including gradual type checking. Uh, currently, uh, there are three proposals. Uh, there are three proposals uh, for level two checking uh, called Steep, Solvent, RDL. Unfortunately, they require not only signatures but also tool defined annotations. But at the cost, uh, they can verify Ruby code uh, more deeply than level one type checking. Okay, and I review the three uh, items. Uh, first is a type signature for Ruby code. Uh, almost all libraries is uh, supposed to bundle their signatures. Uh, second is level one checking. Uh, it is library's signature and application code and produces possible uh, type errors. And it uh, also uh, suggests a prototype of type signatures for uh, non unfit application code. And finally, uh, level two type checker verifies uh, the correspondence between uh, application code and its signature. Uh, and if they find inconsistency, uh, they report uh, uh, it as a warning. Now, there are uh, some uh, use cases for this uh, tool chain. At first, uh, if, you, uh, if you are not interested in static checking at all, uh, you don't have to use anything, uh, of course. And uh, if you want to just find uh, a possible bug, but if you are not so interested in it, uh, in types, uh, you can uh, write a code as before and just apply type uh, level one type checking. And if you want to verify uh, your code more deeply, uh, you can uh, write a code, uh, apply level one checker to pro uh, prototype a signature, and finally uh, apply level two checker. If you might uh, want to write a code in type driven style, uh, like other statically typed languages such as Haskell, uh, you can first write a signature and then write a code. Uh, finally, apply level two checker. Each tool is currently de under development. Uh, now all the projects uh, are now open source, including Solve, as you know. And Ruby signature is now discussed mainly by tool developers, uh, but you can comment on uh, on this repository. And type profiler, uh, my project is very, uh, still very experimental and it has still some problems, but I believe uh, it is uh, the most rubbish way to analyze Ruby code. And Steep is in trial use status. Uh, it is experimentally used in Cider Inc. Uh, company whose CTO is the author of Steep, Sotaro Matsumoto. And it is based on structural subtyping, so it can handle uh, it can deal with uh, duck typing uh, very well, but the author says uh, it requires relatively a lot of uh, annotations, inline annotations. And uh, Solve is uh, uh, most mature among these tools. And it is developed by a team of Stripe and experimentally used uh, in Stripe and some companies. And uh, it is kind of uh, pay as you go. So it works without annotation, but the verification is not so deep. Uh, if you write a signature and annotation, uh, so we can verify your code uh, more deeply, much more deeply. The weak point of survey is uh, it has less support for duck typing. Uh, we need to like, include uh, module explicitly to represent uh, duck typing. Uh, what Ruby 3 will sip? Uh, in current plan, Mats wants to bundle uh, things related to type signature itself, including a path library for the type signature format, uh, type signature files for standard libraries, and Ruby gems that can deal with uh, type signature files. And there are no plan to bundle any checkers. They will be released uh, as external gems for, for a while. But recently, I hear uh, Mats wants to bundle type profiler because type inference is uh, relatively important in the tool chain. Uh, so this uh, plan is still discussed and may change in future. OK, I proceed to the next topic, uh, my project uh, called type profiler. Uh, this is working example of type profiler. Uh, this is this program has a type. Uh, uh, time is not times. 
by applying uh, type profiler uh, to this program, uh, an error, uh, undefined method, integer times uh, is reported. And this is an example of inference. By applying type profiler to this code, uh, it will say uh, that the function who uh, is defined and it receives an integer and uh, return a string as, uh, in type uh, signature format, integer to string. And uh, this is example of overloading. Uh, this function receives integers and string and symbol. And in any case, it always returns a string. So uh, these three signatures are produced, uh, integer to string and string to string and symbol to string. Uh, this is an example of recursive method. Uh, type profiler is a virtual interpreter, so naive implementation uh, calls, may cause uh, stack overflow to run this code, but uh, it will well handled by using so-called in context, uh, sorry, uh, context, uh, context in sense to analysis. And it produces <coughs> uh, a signature saying fib uh, uh, is an integer to integer method. Okay, so this is a demonstration, but and I explain uh, then uh, the basic idea of type profiler. Uh, it is an abstract interpreter I set uh, to run a Ruby code in type level. Uh, this slide shows a very simple example. Uh, in a normal Ruby, uh, Ruby interpreter, it, uh, this call who 42 passes an integer object 42, and the method returns a string uh, object 42 as you know. And in, on the contrary, uh, in type profiler, this call passes uh, integer type itself instead of a concrete value uh, 42. And the method returns a string type instead of concrete uh, string contain that contains 42. And uh, so type, type profiler records what types uh, uh, passed and returned and shows the observation in type signature format like this. Okay, and the difficult part of uh, type profiler is a branch. Uh, because type profiler abstracts a concrete value, uh, so we cannot tell which branch is executed, selected. For example, uh, consider we are now here, and the type profiler is attempting att attempt to uh, evaluate this. Uh, uh, but uh, type profiler just knows n is an integer. Uh, there's, uh, there's no uh, concrete information. So uh, it cannot determine if uh, n less than 10 is true or false. So type profiler forks the execution uh, like this and both runs both then and else clauses. In this case, uh, then clause uh, returns an integer and else clause returns a string. And uh, by gathering the, the results, uh, type profiler suggests uh, a, a type signature, uh, like uh, by using a union type, integer to integer or string. As you might see, uh, this approach may cause so-called state explosion problem. Uh, this code is a typical example. Uh, it initializes uh, variables A, B, C, D, and E uh, as nil, and conditionally assigns in, an integer to variable A, and then conditionally uh, assigns an integer to B, blah, blah, blah. And these uh, branches uh, cause hooks, and uh, then the number of states uh, are doubled for each branch. Uh, this is a state explosion problem. Uh, this problem actually occurred uh, in the experiment, and when uh, I took uh, type profiler in Ruby Kai, uh, Japanese Ruby conference, uh, at April, and at the time uh, the analysis was very wrong. Uh, for example, uh, type profiler type profiler is written in Ruby, so it is applicable to itself, uh, but it took 10 minutes. And analyzing my uh, benchmark program called OptCarrot for Ruby 3 by 3 uh, took uh, about three minutes. So I admit that uh, type profiler was not useful uh, practically uh, at the time. 
So I spend the time, as I spend time to revamp the algor uh, analysis algorithm. Uh, I investigated some papers in research area of uh, abstract interpretation and symbolic execution, and inspired by a technique called uh, state merging, I improved uh, the algorithm significantly. And I briefly explained the current analysis algorithm improved by uh, state merging. As you may know, uh, an interpreter uses an environment, which is a map from a variable to value. But in type profiler, uh, a type profiler is an abstract interpreter that abstracts uh, the value to type. So environment, uh, in this case, is a map from variable to uh, a type. This table uh, represents an example uh, environment. X is a union type of uh, integer and string, so it means uh, X is integer or string, and Y is an integer. In type profiler, each bytecode instruction has an environment. And uh, type profiler simulates uh, each instruction by mutating and propagating the environment. For example, assume uh, x is a nil and y is an uh, integer. And now we are executing this uh, assignment, x equal 1. Uh, type profiler simulates this instruction by mutating and propagating each uh, type from pre environment to post environment. In this case, uh, post environment is assumed to uh, initialize empty. And x is now uh, an integer by this assignment. And y is not affected by this uh, assignment, so uh, it is just kept, uh, so still it an uh, integer. Uh, type profile repeats this process until the environment updates converges. Uh, this is a larger example. This code defines a function who and calls uh, it, uh, defines a function who and calls it, and this call instruction uh, propagates an integer to argument, uh, of argument A of uh, function who. So this part, oops, uh, oops, this part, okay, is uh, changed. It passes an uh, integer to uh, A in line one. And now uh, we focus the first line. Uh, there are no uh, meaningful uh, statement in first line, so uh, it just uh, copies uh, the environment to the next uh, line, line two, like this. Now then uh, we are at line three. Uh, this instruction is the branch, so we focus the execution and uh, propagates uh, the both branches like this, uh, line three and line five, okay? Like this. And then focus line three. Uh, this assigns an integer to A to uh, uh, variable B. Uh, so uh, note that uh, the next instruction is line seven, so it relates, uh, so it adds an integer to B, uh, in line seven, like this, like this. And then we focus line five. And this assigns a string to a variable uh, B. And uh, the next instruction is line seven again. So it adds a string uh, to B, line seven, like this, okay? Uh, finally, we are now at line seven. Uh, this instruction copies uh, typo, typo B to C. Uh, we can just copy uh, this set uh, integer and string uh, to C, like this. And uh, my previous naive implementation handled uh, two, oops, oops. <laughs> What's happened? <laughs> OK. <laughs> uh, my previous uh, naive implementation uh, under two states in uh, this, this case. One is for integer and one is uh, for string. Uh, but now we can handle it as a set. Uh, so state explosion prism relax. This is a state merging technique. And get, uh, by gathering this information, uh, type profiler can produce uh, uh, type signature, prototype of type signature. Okay, so by this improvement, uh, the analysis time is really relaxed, uh, reduced. Uh, analyzing itself takes just 2.5 two seconds, and the analyzing optical takes uh, 6 seconds. 
This unit is uh, correct, not wrong. And <laughs> this is a comparison graph. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, but uh, type profile still has uh, some problems. Uh, one is type profile is, uh, uh, requires a test trigger uh, method definition. Uh, if uh, there is no test, the type profiler cannot uh, check no infer method. But even if uh, we have a great type checkers, we need to, uh, we still need to write a test. So I think this is not so a big problem. And second is uh, more severe. Uh, type profiler may cause false positive and wrong suggestions. For example, uh, assume B is a union of integer and string and copies it to C. It loses, uh, unfortunately, it loses uh, the correspondence between variables B and C. So B plus C uh, will be falsely reduced, uh, alerted, uh, as it may cause uh, integer plus string. And uh, the last uh, type profile cannot handle some Ruby uh, features because of abstraction. Uh, for example, to follow uh, object send method call, we need to identify the target method name concretely, but it is abstracted out as an uh, instance of uh, string. Uh, this is, uh, goes to uh, singleton class. Uh, this problem is uh, not solvable in general, but if uh, this problem frequently matters uh, in actual example, uh, I may reconsider uh, any workaround in future. Okay. And finally, I explained the development status. Uh, I have designed uh, the basic algorithm to uh, analyze Ruby code by using abstract interpretation. Currently, it supports a very limited set of Ruby features, uh, variables, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and however, <laughs> there is, um, uh, remains many tasks <laughs> that I need to implement. Uh, first, I need to support Ruby's very rich features, including built-in classes, complex arguments, like optional REST keywords. And currently, it does not yet support exceptional and mixing uh, uh, modules, uh, and there are many ta other tasks uh, to make type profile practical, so I'd like to continue to development. Okay, uh, sorry, there is no time, so skip a question. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, conclusion. Uh, I explained what's the plan for Ruby 3 types, and it consists of three key items for the tool chain. And I introduced type profile at level one type checker, check, uh, checking tool that is included in and uh, the tool chain. Except uh, MRuby's uh, ZIT compiler, uh, type profile is only one approach uh, applicable to a uh, non annotated Ruby code. Uh, it is based on abstract interpretation technique, and I hope it will make it possible to analyze Ruby code uh, with little change of uh, Ruby's great programming experience. Uh, type profile is open source, so any comments and contribution are really welcome. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Here's some treasure. Uh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>